Hey guys, in this video I will be talking about Herceptin, which is a uh, medication used to treat patients with breast cancer, um, specifically patients who are HER2 receptor positive, um, and uh, I'll be going through how we screen for, whether or not you're a candidate for Herceptin, the side effects you can expect, as well as the improvements uh, that uh, may be available for current Herceptin techniques. And so the first question I ask is, how do we find candidates who uh, we can actually treat with Herceptin? And the way we do that is with an FDA-approved test called an immunohistochemistry assay. And if you're familiar with ELISA, um, what it is is we essentially take a biopsy of a tumor and we will uh, subject it to uh, antibodies. And these antibodies will have a particular affinity for uh, receptors called HER2. And HER2 is a receptor that is expressed on healthy cells, but there are certain types of cancer that have overexpression of HER2. And so um, in patients who have a high enough affinity uh, or a high enough concentration of HER2 receptors uh, in their tumor, uh, they are a, considered a good candidate for Herceptin. And uh, Herceptin is, uh, or is able to treat approximately 15 to 30% of breast cancer patients. And uh, in this case, um, if we were looking at a generic IHC example, um, we can consider the antigens to be HER2 receptors. And so, Herceptin is administered with an initial dosage of four milligrams per kilogram or megs per keg. And depending on how a patient responds, an oncologist will vary the dosage accordingly. And so the best case that we can get with Herceptin uh, without going too into too much detail behind the mechanism is that the tumor growth will stop or slow down. And uh, the reason for this is because Herceptin is an antibody that will bind to the HER2 receptors, uh, the receptor sites on cells. And these HER2 receptors are where hormones will um, interact with cells in order to allow them to uh, grow and divide. And so on cancers, in specific kinds of cancers, we have an excess amount of HER2 uh, receptors. And so um, what Herceptin does is it will block estrogen and progesterone and other kinds of hormones from binding, uh, interacting with the uh, tumor cells, and uh, therefore the tumor cannot grow as voraciously as it currently is and it will slow down. And uh, as sad as that might sound, might sound um, the, the upside to it is if you can slow down your tumor growth enough, you can buy yourself more time um, and give your body's immune system uh, a better chance of being able to um, identify and destroy the cancer cells as well. Because oftentimes in medicine, the key is just figuring out how do you help your body's natural immune system defend itself. And so this is a uh, one method. And so uh, if you uh, are a breast cancer patient who uh, is a candidate for Herceptin, uh, you will go in for a 90 minute IV infusion and the price you can expect to pay would be $4.44 per milligram in the United States. Uh, and if you live in the UK, which is the lowest price, you can expect to pay 26 milligrams. Uh, and so uh, what we're seeing here also is that the price of medications in the United States uh, is 17 times more expensive. And the reason for that is price discrimination. And so to go into the side effects that we can expect to see with Herceptin, um, the, the key uh, proponent of these side effects has to do with the fact that it's a systemic administration and HER2 receptors are also present on cells other than the tumor. We've got lung, intestine, heart, stomach, ovarian cells. They all have HER2 receptors too. And so when we introduce Herceptin into the body and it begins to block the hormone receptor sites on these cells, uh, what happens is the patients will begin to uh, have very serious side effects, uh, shortness of breath, the nausea, um, among several others, and pain as well. Um, and another key thing to note 
uh, and in Genentech's clinical trials, uh, there was a reported death when one patient uh, was taking an anthracycline uh, alongside Herceptin. And this has to do with the fact that Herceptin and anthracyclines uh, will bind to receptors and um, the, the, that, that particular combination uh, has an even worse effect with the, uh, mu the heart muscle cells. And so um, it prevents the heart muscle cells from um, going through their, uh, you know, from functioning properly um, and it leads to cardiotoxicity and heart problems. And so um, that is a serious side effect uh, to note. And then in addition, you can expect to have a suppressed immune system um, because having all these um, antibodies present in your body uh, has, Herceptin has a poor biocompatibility um, and this will um, activate the immune system. It'll put it under stress. Uh, and you will also have lower white blood cell counts, which makes you more susceptible to other diseases while you are undergoing chemotherapy, for instance. And um, to kind of underline this point, the circulatory system will be strained. Uh, so you're going to have a weaker heart because you're interfering with the heart muscle cells. Um, and in addition to that, your red blood cell count will drop because production of red blood cells is regulated by hormones in your body and Herceptin is interfering with the endocrine system. So um, it is not a far reach to say you can expect to see lower red blood cell counts. And so the question to ask is how can we do better? And uh, in recent years, we've seen a lot of improvements in the field of nanotechnology. And uh, so localizing the delivery of Herceptin will be the key to um, lowering the side effects and increasing the efficacy. And so what we'll find is that, or if we're able to do this, it would be great. Um, one method would be to use nanoparticles and nano self-assembly techniques in which um, we could package the Herceptin um, inside a micelle, which is what we see in the figure to the right. Um, and what will happen is these micelles will have um, we can place IPV4 receptor binders to it. And so tumors um, have certain receptors that are well characterized um, and by scientists. And so um, we can design receptors uh, or binders to these receptors. So they, they, these micelles that contain Herceptin will have a high affinity for the tumor region in particular, um, and they'll bind to it. And uh, it gets very tricky, but if we could figure out how to design some kind of um, delivery mechanism as well as so once these micelles reach their target do they deploy their cargo uh, in the appropriate area um, if we could do that um, it would be excellent because not only would we be able to have higher dosages of Herceptin which would allow us to realize higher efficacies of the product um, but also lower side effects because we wouldn't be exposing healthy cells to toxic levels of Herceptin and then in addition um, just to go into a little bit more detail behind the nanotechnology that's involved here. Uh, the way this would work, uh, one of the ways is via the enhanced permeability and retention effect, the EPR effect. Um, and EPR is due to uh, a consequence of the quickness with which these tumor cells are growing and the huge appetite they have for nutrients in particular. And so what happens is the capillaries that surround tumor sites are often much more permeable than uh, in healthy tissues and that's because these tumors are growing um, as much as they are and so um, if we are able to uh, utilize the EPR effect uh, and use it as much as we can uh, we can uh, improve uh, a lot of our cancer treatments not just Herceptin and so um, this concludes um, how we can do better in terms of receptive administration. Um, I hope you guys find it useful. Let me know if you have any questions and thanks for watching.